Hello everyone and welcome to Black Star Potential. My name is Lee Fuge and I'm here today with mjammusic.com and in this video we're going to learn the remaining four shapes out of the five shapes of the minor pentatonic scale. If you haven't already learned the first shape, please check out the video on the Black Star YouTube channel which details this shape. All of the notes and the theory from that video are transferable to this video and what we're going to learn today. All of the tones you're hearing in this video are coming from the Black Star ID Core V3 which is miked with a Lewitt Audio LCT 440 condenser mic. The amp is set on the clean bright voice with the ISF all the way to the American side. So in the video where we talked about the first shape of the scale, I mentioned that the pentatonic scale is made up from just five notes. So to keep this consistent with that video, we're going to talk about these shapes in the key of A minor today. So as a refresher, the notes we're going to be using are A, C, D and E, and G. We also refer to these by their interval numbers, which is 1, flat 3, 4, 5, and flat 7. Once we've learned all four of these additional shapes, I'm going to show you a little method you guys can use to quickly map out the position of each of the subsequent shapes all around the fretboard. The reason this is useful is when you start to build your lead guitar vocabulary and you go into playing more complicated solos, you want to break away from this first position box. It's super easy to get stuck in this position as a new player, but all of your favorite guitar players, if you watch and play, they're probably flying around the fretboard and playing notes all over the place. So having the ability and the knowledge on how to break out of that first pentatonic box is very useful and it will give a lot of benefit to you as you start to develop your own lead guitar skills. So we're going to start off by learning the shapes and then like I said I'll show you a quick method you can use to put them all together and find them very quickly. So here's the second shape. So we're going to be playing 8 and 10 on the low E string. 7 and 10 on the A and D strings, 7 and 9 on the G, and 8 and 10 on the B and E. So here's the second shape, ascending and descending. Third shape now, we're going to start off by playing 10 and 12 on the E, A and D strings, 9 and 12 on the G, 10 and 13 on the B, and 10 and 12 on the E. So here's the third shape, ascending and descending. Fourth shape now, we're starting on the 12th fret of the low E string, so it's 12 and 15 on the E and A, 12 and 14 on the D and G, 13, 15 on the B, and 12, 15 on the E. So here's the fourth shape, ascending and descending. And finally, the fifth shape, we're going to be starting up here on the 15, so we're playing 15 and 17 on the E and the A, 14 and 17 on the D and G, and 15 and 17 on the B and E. So here's the fifth shape of the pentatonic scale, ascending and descending.
Now, each of those minor pentatonic scales are directly related. So here is where the little tip comes in. Once you've learned all five of those shapes, you need to start putting them together. And as you start to build different lead guitar solos, the ability to mix shapes will be very, very useful in moving around the fretboard. So in order to understand how these things fit together, we first need to think about those five notes once more, A, C, D, E, and G. Now, you just saw me play a couple of different scale shapes moving from the 8th fret right up to the 15th and 17th frets. So I covered quite a lot of ground there, but I was still just playing five notes. Every note you heard there was an A, a C, a D, a G, or an E. So this is why minor pentatonic scales are great, because not only do they allow you to move around the fretboard, but they're also great for your fretboard mapping knowledge. Just by knowing that that's simply five notes, I now know those five notes all over the guitar. When I understand how octaves work, I can then map out the same shapes in higher registers. For instance, the fifth fret is an A note, as is the 17th fret. So I could actually take that third shape I learned last week, move it up an octave and play the same shape from the 17th fret. Now the hard part is learning how to remember these shapes and where they all start. Now A is a great key to start in because it's quite easy to map the fretboard in the key of A minor. Obviously as you move this into different keys, you're gonna face different challenges, but the same principles will apply. So A minor is a great place to start. So let's once again take those five notes, A, C, D, E, and G. Once you've learnt the pentatonic shapes, so the form of each of the shapes, the first, the second, the third, fourth, and the fifth, learn them as patterns. Then you need to apply them based on their position to the root of the key. So that's this first position, first note. This A note here is almost like my home note. This is where it all starts, and this is the point that we should relate everything back to. I think when you're learning scales and you're learning mapping on the fretboard, it's really good to have a home point to pull everything back to. So once I've memorized all five of my shapes, I now need to lay them out in a way that they're all relative to this first note. So here's a little tip which is great for speeding this up. If we take those five notes, A, C, D, E, and G, and I lay them out along the low E string, A, C, D, E, and G. What I've now done is I've actually given myself a starting point for each of my five scale shapes. So as long as I know what the five notes are for whatever key that I'm playing the minor pentatonic scale in, I can lay those out on one string, the low E string, and those are the starting points for each of my shapes. Now the great thing is, because this is only five notes, what we're essentially doing is each time we play a new shape, we're playing the same five notes, but we're stacking them from the next note in the scale. So for instance, the first shape, A, C, D, E, G, that's from the one, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven. That's the first five notes of the first shape. If I start from the eighth fret, what I'm actually doing is I'm playing the same notes, but I'm starting with a C. So I'm playing C, D, E, G, and A. So now I'm just playing flat three, four, five, flat seven, one. Playing the same notes though. My third shape I start from a D, so I'm going D, E, G, A, C. So I'm doing exactly the same thing, but I'm starting from the fourth note of the scale. So I'm doing four, five, flat seven, one, flat three. As you can imagine, the fifth shape now is the same thing, but I'm starting from an E note. So it's E, G, A, C, D. And the fifth shape I'm starting from a G, so it's G, A, C, D, and E. So each of the subsequent shapes starts from the next note in the scale. So as long as you know what those five notes are, you can very easily move them around. Now because I know that the fifth note of the scale, which is my flat seven, is a G, I can also take that fifth shape that I learnt and I can put it here from this G. So this allows me to not only go above my first shape pentatonic, but also below. Now again, going below the pentatonic shape is easier in certain keys than others. A, it kind of works in because I'm quite low down the fretboard, but if I'm in a key like C, for instance, where I'm playing C minor from the eighth fret, I've got a lot of room this side, and I also have a lot of room this side, so I can extend my pentatonics up 
and also backwards. Think of this like a rolling sort of note scale, like a piano. It just keeps going. I can infinitely extend my shape either direction as long as my fretboard allows it. So certain guitars, if you've got 21 frets or 24 frets, you may find you lose a couple of notes from one shape. It's just one of those things that different guitars will give you different capabilities. So when you're practicing this kind of thing, make sure you know the notes on the fretboard. Refer to the fretboard diagram in the written part of this, which is on the Blackstar website. Look at the notes for whatever key you're playing in. I'll write this up for you in A minor, so you can see it laid out the way we've talked about it, and then try and apply this principle to some other keys as well. Take a minor pentatonic, scale in whatever key you want, learn what the five notes are, lay those out along one string, and there are your five starting positions for each of the five pentatonic shapes. So there you go, there is an overview of all five of the minor pentatonic shapes and a little trick you guys can use to quickly find them all around the guitar. So hopefully that really starts to open up the fretboard for you now and as you start to dig deeper into your lead guitar playing, these tips will help you expand beyond that first pentatonic shape. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Let us know down below in the comments what you've thought, how you've gotten on with this, and if there are any other topics you'd like to see us talk about, please put them down below as well. Don't forget to check out Black Star Amplification on YouTube for more free lessons just like this. And if you're looking for a guitar teacher, please head to mgrmusic.com. Check out the Music Teacher Database. There are a great network of teachers all around the country waiting to help you guys out. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.